Oh, well, thank you very much, Frank, and, uh, and Harold as well, and uh, it's a pleasure to be here. In uh, August 1875, after having lived at Bellevue Place Sanitarium for more than two months, placed there by her oldest son, Robert, declared insane by a Chicago jury, Mary Lincoln wrote to her friend, Myra Bradwell, it does not appear that God is good to have placed me here. I endeavor to read my Bible and offer up my petitions three times a day, but my afflicted heart fails me and my voice often falters in prayer. I have worshiped my son and no unpleasant word ever passed between us, yet I cannot understand why I should have been brought out here. Now these are questions that have been asked for decades and still are asked today. Namely, was Mary Lincoln really crazy? And just why did her son have her committed to an insane asylum? Now, of course, I address these questions in my book, The Madness of Mary Lincoln. And uh, as Frank said, my book was begun uh, based on my discovery of uh, Mary's missing letters from the asylum. I found uh, 25 letters, 20 written by Mary, five by other people about Mary, written between the years 1872 and 1878. And they were written mostly between Mary and her friend Myra Bradwell, a uh, Chicago feminist and abolitionist. But you know, um, what was really exciting, of course, was that historians have been trying to find those letters for about 80 years or so, which uh, made me feel pretty good when I found them. But even before people ask me, you know, do I think Mary was really crazy, um, the first question I almost always get is, how did you find those letters? You know, I really don't feel like talking about it today, but um, <laughs> no, I'm kidding. I'll, of course I'll tell you. No. I will, I will get to that in a few minutes. <laughs> a lot of scared faces for a minute. <laughs> but to understand Mary's uh, institutionalization, um, there's a lot of things you have to understand first. Um, one of the things, of course, you know, there are two really, two main theories about um, Mary's mental health, mental state. The currently prominent theory was popularized by Jean Baker in her 1987 biography of Mary Lincoln called Mary Todd Lincoln, A Biography. And um, basically, Jean Baker's um, thesis is that Mary Lincoln was a perfectly sane woman whose problems were the fault of everyone else, that she was the victim of a male chauvinist society, and that uh, Robert was a horrible, cold-hearted, rapacious bastard of a son who wanted to steal her money and lock her up and get her out of the way because she was so embarrassing. Now, the other theory, which is less prominent, um, is that Mary was really crazy and that Robert did what he had to do to protect her. Uh, of course, that doesn't get a whole lot of play. Uh, the closest you'll find to it is uh, probably the insanity file, uh, which Frank mentioned by um, Mark E. Neely and R. Gerald, Mc <coughs> R. Gerald McMurtry, which came out in 1986. Interestingly, both of those books uh, utilized the same source, namely Robert Todd Lincoln's personal insanity file, which was a complete documentary record of uh, Robert having his mother institutionalized. And uh, despite the fact that both books used the same evidence, they came up with completely antithetical conclusions, which has led uh, one historian to wonder whether evidence even matters in matters of historical importance, <laughs> <laughs> which I think is a salient point. Of course, I used uh, the insanity file in my, my book. Um, of course, I used the lost letters that I found. I also found uh, a lot of other unknown, unpublished letters in my researches, uh, newspaper articles, magazine articles that have never been used, including some wonderful psychiatric evaluations of Mary written by psychiatrists in psychiatric academic journals, which I was surprised that no one had ever cited before. And then, of course, I've had 20 years of subsequent research since those other two books to use. Um, but I also used um, psychiatric experts. I consulted with three experts because I'm not a doctor. And um, it was amazing. It really opened my eyes to a lot of aspects of, of Mary Lincoln and her mental illness and even of Robert and why he did what he did. And the experts pointed out to me a lot of things that I did not see and a lot of things that I probably would not have seen without their assistance. And uh, I'm happy to say that my main expert actually wrote an essay of his professional opinion of Mary's mental illness based on my facts. That's in the appendix of my book. It's really interesting. I was very pleased that he did that for me. Now, Mary Lincoln's mental illness is not a subject confined simply to her, which is another reason it's so fascinating. Of course, it deals with her and her family. Of course, you have to understand her relationship with her husband as a family, and then also um, dealing with Abraham Lincoln as president, their years in the White House. But it also includes aspects of the Civil War, 
of the Reconstruction Period, the Gilded Age, legal, medical, and social history, gender issues, the history of psychiatry. And um, what I think is one of the most important things is you have to understand Robert Todd Lincoln, which I don't think anybody really does. Um, no historian, I've read the entire historiography of everything ever written about this, and no one has ever tried to figure out why Robert did what he did. They either just dismiss it, or they judge him morally. So what a horrible man he had his mother committed. But they don't try to understand his motivations. And um, my book is as much about Robert as it is about Mary, uh, who he was and why he did what he did. And I think you, you have to understand that Robert was a quintessential Victorian era, Gilded Age gentleman. He was full of the, the manly notions of duty and honor, and he believed very strongly in family privacy. Uh, he got a lot of that in his schooling in New England. He was at Harvard for four years, Phillips Exeter Academy for one year. And um, you know, he really believed, and throughout all of his letters, you can see that it was his duty to protect her. He was the last male Lincoln. He was the oldest son. Uh, he said many times to his aunt and other people, um, one particular quote, he said, I have done my duty as I best know, and providence must take care of the rest. Now, of course, you also have to look at his mother's symptoms and what other people were telling Robert, advising him to do, because he didn't act alone. He consulted with seven medical experts, as well as three of his father's closest friends and advisors, David Davis, Leonard Sweat, and John Todd Stewart, all of whom knew Mary Lincoln for more than 20 years. And John Todd Stewart was even Mary's cousin. And they all agreed that Mary was insane, which I will get to later. Now, my conclusion is that Mary Lincoln did have very serious mental illness. If you look at her early life, one can easily discern early manifestations of manic depressive illness, or what today we call bipolar disorder. She had symptoms of depression, delusions of persecution, of poverty, of various somatic ailments. She suffered uh, hallucinations, narcissism or inflated self-esteem, insomnia, mood swings, and of course the thing that we all know is her extravagant spending, which uh, psychiatrists call monomania. Uh, these early manifestations later developed into full-blown psych psychotic episodes with the above symptoms, usually magnified, and eventually um, she devolved into threats of physical violence against other people, namely her son Robert, whom she threatened to murder and whom she said she hired two men to murder. And of course, she tried to commit suicide. Now, the multiplicity of her psychotic episodes show that she did not simply suffer one psychotic episode in 1875, which led to her institutionalization. But in my book, I trace her mental illness all the way back to her childhood and all the way up to her death, and you can see that it spans her entire life. Of course, you cannot judge her by that alone, and you can't understand her if you don't understand also that she lived a very, very tragic and traumatic life, and you cannot separate that from whatever mental illness she had. Of course, you know, she suffered the early deaths of her parents, the deaths of three of her four sons, the murder of her husband, whom she was sitting next to and holding his hand, the deaths of numerous relatives during the war, the estrangement of family and friends during the White House years, the unrelenting criticism of the press, the apathy of the American people after she left the White House, and of course the disdain of Congress who did not want to give her any money, give her a pension or anything, because um, she treated them badly during the White House and they didn't want to help her out. And if you look at all of, if you look at her entire life, you can see that a lot of her psychotic episodes really revolved around some of the main traumatic events. Uh, if we just take the, the major episodes, you know, when her son Eddie died in 1850 when he was four, which was in a span of six months, uh, her son died, her father died, her grandmother died. And Mary was completely distraught. You know, she wouldn't eat, she wouldn't leave her room, she wouldn't change her clothes. And finally, Abraham Lincoln had to plead with her, Mary, you must eat, for we must live. Then if you go up, then she got a little bit better. Then in 1862, Willie died in the White House. And again, Elizabeth Keckley and other people there said that uh, Mary was just completely inconsolable. And again, she wouldn't leave her room, she wouldn't eat, she wouldn't do anything. And finally, Abraham Lincoln, as Elizabeth Keckley said, he took her to the window, pointed out the insane asylum on the hill and said, mother, you must try and control your grief or it will drive you mad and we will have to send you there. And it's interesting that for all of the opprobrium addressed at Robert Lincoln for having his mother committed, it was actually Abraham Lincoln who was the first person to suggest that she might have to be committed. 